Are you ready to find out what happens next in the story of Albert and the Blubber Monster? Let's carry on. Chapter 5. Blubber Castle. Albert and Ernie were panting heavily when they got to the top of the Grey Hill. The climb had been very steep. Ernie's eyes widened. Whoa! That's a huge castle! Many turrets of thick grey stone towered into the sky around the castle. At the centre of it was a tall metal gate. In front of this stood two guards in suits of armour. Albert stared at them. Their bodies were human-shaped, but their heads were shark-like. One head was pointed like a bullet with eyes and a mouth, and the other was the shape of a hammerhead. They're fish people, Albert realised. Quick, hide, Ernie whispered, crouching behind a rock. Remember what Elodie said? The blubber monster thinks King Honeybone's army is still after him. He hates humans. Albert joined him. How can we get past them? We can't. They have swords. It's too dangerous. Those suits of armour look heavy. We could outrun them easily. Mm, no, too risky. Ernie paused. But the blubber monster loves treasure, doesn't he? I've got an idea. Put your coat over your head. Why? We're going to pretend to be fish people. Ernie lifted his coat up so his head couldn't be seen. He stood up and walked towards the castle gate. Albert frowned, but followed. What was Ernie playing at? Oi! called, called Bullethead. He snarled at them. Peeking through a gap in his coat, Albert saw the guards raid his sharp teeth. Who are you? How did you find Blubber Castle? asked Hammerhead. We're fish people, like you, Ernie replied. Why are you hiding your heads? asked Bullethead. We... We've only just turned into fish people, said Albert. We look really ugly. Hammerhead nodded and his voice softened. You'll get used to it. But what are you doing here? We're Lord Blubber's guards. He doesn't need any more. Uh, we don't want to be guards. We have bought Lord Blubber some treasure, Ernie replied. Albert narrowed his eyes. What treasure? Ernie looked at Albert and mouthed, The bottle! Suddenly Albert realised Ernie wanted to trick the guards into thinking the bottle was treasure. Albert stepped towards them and held the bottle out, hoping it would glow again, then it really would look like treasure. The guards towered over him, over two metres high, the size of real sharks. Hammerhead's armour creaked as he bent down to look at the bottle, which glowed brighter than ever. It's so shiny, said Hammerhead. What does it do? Albert thought fast. It grants three wishes. Ooh. Bullethead gave him a toothy grin. That's one wish for Lord Blubber and one for each of us. Oh, what will you wish for, Hammy? Hmm. I've always dreamed of being a ballerina, said Hammerhead. I once stole a tutu from a princess. I think it suited me. What about you? I've always wanted to be called Bob. I hate my real name. Oh, but I think pointy pointy nose suits you, said Hammerhead. Under his coat, Albert smiled. Ernie coughed. So, can we go in? Uh, oh, right, yes, said Bullethead. I will take both of you to meet Lord Blubber. Chapter 6 Lord Blubber They followed Bullethead along a wide stone corridor. Ernie pointed at something to their right as they walked. Albert looked over and saw a grey statue with the tail of a fish and the top half of a human. It was pressed against the wall, its eyes wide with fear. That's Elodie's dad, Albert hissed. He, he, he must have been cornered by Lord Blubber when he turned to stone. Do you think he'll change back if the water goes in there again? Ernie whispered. Oh, I'm not sure. The only way we'll know is if we can get the birthstone back. Bullethead turned around. Hurry up, you two. The boys rushed to catch the guard up. Albert took in more of the surroundings. 
Half of the wooden doors were normal sized and half were gigantic, at least ten times his height. Bullet heads stopped at one of the giant doors and knocked. Enter! A voice thundered. The door opened by itself and a bright light flooded in through the gaps in Albert's coat. They walked into a large chamber. Albert gasped as he took in the huge mass sitting at the other end. The blubber monster was far uglier than Albert had imagined. As wide as he was tall, he looked like a humongous, trodden beach ball, with wrinkles creasing his greenish-grey skin. On top of his swollen blob of head sat a pearl-covered crown. Around Lord Blubber's neck was a necklace, shimmering against the sickly skin. It must have been the one he'd stolen from King Honeybone. If the monster kept the necklace so close, the Merstone must be somewhere on him too. Albert looked, but couldn't see it anywhere. Who are you? Why are you hiding your heads? Lord Blubber boomed, making the whole room shake. Oh, we have some treasure for you, said Albert, hoping that the mention of the treasure would distract the monster from their odd appearance. What? Uh, a golden bottle that grants wishes. I've seen it, Lord Blubber, said Bullethead. It's shiny. The monster's eyes widened. He licked his fat lips. Come forwards. Show me. Albert did as he was told, careful to keep his coat wrapped around his head. As he got nearer, he saw just how huge Lord Blubber was. He could crush Albert with his little finger if he wanted to. The Blubber monster reached down and, with two fingertips, pulled the bottle out of Albert's hand. It glowed brightly as he held it up to his face. Bottle, stop King Honeybone's army from searching for me. Make King Honeybone forget about the necklace. Lord Blubber, said Bullethead, you're, you're not going to use up all the wishes, are you? I was hoping I could use one. Silence, the monster waited. Nothing happened. He grunted. How do I know if it has worked? It, it will only work if you give something of your own away, said Ernie. Albert realised what Ernie was trying to do. Get the monster to give them the Merstone. Mm, I see, Lord Blubber sat back. He sniffed and frowned. Then he sniffed again. You two don't fest smell too smell like fish to me. And why are you hiding? You didn't answer me the first time. He reached towards Albert. Before Albert could move away, the monster pulled down his coat with a fingernail. Humans, he roared. How did you find me? No human can find my island. This is a trick, isn't it? King Honeybone has sent you to trick me. Lard gob gobules of spit landed on Albert's face, but he couldn't wipe them off. He was frozen in fear. What is this bottle? It's poison, isn't it? You are trying to poison me. Lord Blubber swung his tree trunk sized arm and hurled the bottle across the room. It smashed against the opposite wall. Albert's heart stopped as the monster's large head reached towards him and picked him up. Albert! Ernie cried. He ran forwards, but the guards grabbed hold of him. Is Lord Blubber going to throw me too? Albert thought, dangling many metres off the ground. It would break every bone in his body. He thrashed his legs in panic. What are you doing in my castle? The monster roared. We, we were just out fishing and, and got lost, cried Albert. That was when he looked at the lumpy fingers squeezing him. Set into a ring on Lord Blubber's little finger was a purple diamond. The Merstone. But before Albert could do anything, the monster put him down. Guard! Take these humans' rats to my torture chamber. Show them what happened to the last human that came here. Wonder whether Albert and Ernie are going to be okay. Come back tomorrow and you'll find out.